What's up everyone, next one is Galactic here, and today I'm bringing you my Drytron deck profile for June 2023. This deck profile is a pure build of Drytron, and is the build that I currently use in Master Duel to climb up, not to mast on um, Diamond Rank, but I climbed up pretty far in the ladder with this deck, and it's one of the three decks that I play currently on Master Duel, being um, between Drytron, Cleefords, and Tailments recently. Those are the only three decks that I play. And Dragon is the one I've been playing the longest to get all everything that I want to reach level 50. Since I did use Dragon to reach level 50, so that I can play so I can get the Dragon um like screen. And I'm also currently using it in the current format to get the um Usatic screen. I'm at level I think like level 30 something at this point. I don't really play too much though. But yeah, this is the deck that I've used. I have a pretty high win record with this deck. Um, it can OTK out of nowhere, it can play in the long game, it's just, it's Drytron, it's basically just a free win at this point to me. A lot of people say this deck isn't good, but I like Drytron, it's probably one of my favorite decks to play, since it is a machine deck, which I like machines, and I like virtual summoning, which is like two birds, one stone for me, and I really like this deck a lot. So, this is my take on the, bit, um, take on the deck, you can have a different opinion. If you think my my deck is wrong because I don't play Cyber Angels or any generic ritual support other than like Manju, but I don't know. I like this deck. I like it a lot. Um, I probably won't, the only one really think I will change about the deck, which I will get to immediately. But other than that, um, this deck is basically perfect the way it is in my opinion. But you can be tell me otherwise and let me know what you think. But starting off, we have three copies of Menju of the 10,000 hands. This card is already being replaced with that new um card. Thing like something is something of the trip of the trillion hands, which a lot which when summoned allows you to add both a ritual spell and a ritual monster from deck to hand. It will be replacing the Manjus. I don't have it currently with me. I know I have the card somewhere on the house. I gotta find it. Because they'll be going to the deck and replacing Manju. Since Manju only searches um, either a monster or a spell, and that both searches and the other one searches both. So I'll be placing it with this. Since it basically does the job of two Drytrons instead of Manju, which does the job of one or the other. So they will be being replaced with the Trojan Hands. Because I just like that card better, and it searches both cards for one summon, which is super cool for me. Close in the deck, too. Uh. <coughs> Next up, we got two copies of Cyber Dragon Core. Um, basically, what it does is when it's summoned, uh, when it's double summoned, you can add one Cyber um, Spell Chop for your deck to your hand. Basically, I mean Cyber Emergency just because Cyber Emergency is really good. It's, like, it's other effects don't really matter to you. Just add, basically, just, it just adds Cyber Emergency. That's all it's really there for. Um, you can't really use it for anything else except for like something like Almirage or like that's really just it. It's just Sheriff Summit to get to Cyber Emergency. That's all you really use it for. Or you can use it to sign like um the Light Charmer as well, if you want. For the Drytrons, we're running one Delta. Well one um one beta. It basically allows you to target a um when it's summoned, like basically once you summon it, you can target a banished Drytron monster to turn to the graveyard. We're one of it. Um we run three Delta, which basically allows you to, when it's summoned, you can reveal a ritual spell or ritual monster from your, um, from your hand to draw a card. I like it a lot. Um, we're next running three Zeta. Basically, when summoned, it allows you to add a ritual spell from deck to hand, which is super helpful. Um, for getting your ritual spells from your to your to your hand, so they can recycle themselves from graveyard. Next up, we're playing probably my favorite one of my favorite ones. Is three alpha, which allows you to add a virtual monster from deck to hand. Which is the, these two basically do the job of Manju. Manju basically replaces one or the other, which basically means like it's your either your six copies of alpha or your six cop or your additional three copies of Zeta. While the trading hands do the job of both these cards, basically means it replacing it replaces both these cards with um three more copies of each of them, which is super helpful. Without really messing with the, without really messing with the deck count, so I like that a lot. And for the last main deck, um, for the small Drytron monster running, is three Gamma, which, which, which when summoned, allows you to summon another Drytron monster from graveyard. 
Um, I like this. I like this lap a lot. Running three of each of them, except for Beta, because Beta only requires it to, a monster you banish, which you do banish monsters quite a bit from your um from one of your original monsters, but you don't really banish them enough to where Beta is really needed. Since by the time you usually banish them from off the retro monster, um, you usually are winning the game anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So it's like I don't really see the point of writing more than one of it. I can cut it down to one to zero if I wanted to, but I like having all of them in the deck. The second extra name in rotation. But yeah, that's basically all it for all your main deck um, ones for the rituals you're writing in the deck. You're running three. Malion is drink um the running three of their main one. Um, Draconids, as I call it. Basically, does when he's um during your opponent's turn, you can banish um up to two Dragon Monsters to start two cards your opponents on the field, which is super nice. Um, that's basically, and he can also attack all special monsters. Uh, attack all special monsters your opponent controls once each. Uh, I think he also does person damage if I'm not mistaken, maybe. Uh, no, but yeah, he can. Uh, if he basically, if his if you rich on him with monsters who level equal to or less, he can attack all special monster opponent controls once each. And quick effect during your opponent's turn, you can banish um, Jarta Monster and Gabriel, whose attack equals 2000 or 4000, and destroy a card your opponent controls for equal um, for each 2000 um, attack points for um, basically for each Jarta banish, basically. You banish up two two, two, from, two small drag trunks from graveyard or two, one big one to either pop one card or two cards. It's up to you. I like the card a lot because it what I only deals with um your opponent, especially something heavy deck, while going second. It also deals with um if you can't um kill your opponent and you have to pass turn, it can also be an interruption for your opponent, which is super nice. Also, on top of that, they're both both of the ritual monsters are level 12. I mean you can hard make Zeus if you want to, which is super nice. In case it ever comes up, which it has before, where I have hard made Zeus, and my opponent is stuck having to deal with a Zeus, and it's always super funny for me. Next up, running two of the other ritual monsters who I can't, whose name I can't pronounce, and what he does is if it's um merge someone with monsters who level equals two or less, um, you can destroy all the chakras your opponent controls. It's just super nice. I have thought the reason because I can't remember if it's if it's second effect does it or the first one does it. But yeah, he allows you to um to basically destroy all spawn shot your opponent controls. It's super nice. And then if it's destroyed, you can put some one um gentle monster from your graveyard except itself. Whose combined attack equals exactly four thousand, which means you can basically spend some two more gentle monsters from your graveyard. Up uh, second for itself, or something one of the really big one. It's also super nice. But it's up to you though. Um, personally, this fight never almost never comes up since so by the time you summon usually summon both of them in like one turn, along with um move beta Fafnir, and it doesn't matter because that's already game on field. Cause it's just like eight thousand points of damage plus move beta Fafnir makes him punch up, punches up punches up to nine um nine thousand all together. And you might be thinking, doesn't that mean uh, don't you mean ten thousand? I mean no. It's usually not that because we made a factor, it usually gets put down to 1k due to the Richard Spell um, returning back to hand. Since you usually target a movement of half near. Since it's not, it's a tech, isn't really needed in the deck. You just kind of push it, have it there for extra damage in case you need to gain your opponent for whatever reason. Next up for spells, we're running three copies of Jartron Fafnir, which is the first spell. Um, it, what it does is when activated, you can add one Drytron spell um, or trap from your deck to your hand, except the self. And when, um, wait, oh, the, um, also, like, make sure that your spells cannot be negated, which is super nice. So it means that you can, your opponent cannot, like, interrupt you with something, which is super nice. And on top of that, if a monster, um, is normal to put something to the field, like, try Drytron ritual, um, Drytron monster. Uh, you can reduce this level by um, it's level by one per every thousand tech points it has, which means that you can really mess up your opponent's exceeds monsters. Every opponent running a very exceeds heavy deck that requires certain levels. Same thing with sacred monsters. Like if you can mess up your really mess up your opponent's leveling 
by having this card and having your opponent's monster lose um, attack points um, a level, which is always super nice since it can really scoop your opponent depending on what deck you're playing. Um, I like having three because this is always a guarantee that I can get to at least one copy of it, which is super nice. I like having this card a lot. I like Drytron um, Dry Fafnir. Dry Fafnir. Next up, of course, we're running three copies of Melionis Drytron, which is their ritual spell card. And what it does is um, it allows. Sorry, that. Let's take the camera. I hit my phone. I'm sorry. Um, what it does basically, you can um, it can be used to summon any ritual uh, monster uh, from your hand or graveyard by tributing mo machine monsters you control uh, from your hand or field whose attack whose total level or total attack equals or exceeds the attack of the monster you want to you want to summon, which is super cool. So you basically summon any monster you want to, but also let you use summon in Drytron since that's the only your choice to play this deck. I uh, also, also have their cycle effect where you can target Jarchon monster you control. It loses all the attack points, and if it does, um, and you add this card back to your hand, which is always super nice since you can always um add back your ritual monsters um, ritual spells to summon the other ritual monster that you don't have on field yet, which is super nice. Uh, I like having three because I like having three because um it always guarantees I at least have see one or two of them per, um in a in an open in my hand at some point in time. Um, next up, you're playing your starter of the deck, being three copies of Dratron Nova. Basically, what card does is you can special summon one Dratron monster from your deck, uh, but it's charging in phase, which is like always super nice and neat. And of course, you're going to wait once per you have to once per turn, and you cannot special monsters, um, special monsters for the turn except for us to carry no more no more summoner set. Um. I like this card a lot because, you know, Dry Dry Nova is kind of just your most important card of the deck. It's your starter. It's what you're searching off of um, Dry Dry Fafnir. You want to discard your opening hand in the air at some point in time. If not, at least get, find a way to get to the fill spell, get this card, and basically off the races. This card is very helpful. Especially if you're getting embittered and you're able to get this card and you haven't added this card yet, and you get to it, and you can basically just combo off from there again. It's always super nice and helpful to have. I like having um, Nova. Um, next up, which is might be a way word choice, but we're running three copies of Dratron Eclipse. And what this card does is you can target one Dratron monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand, which basically means you can recycle your Dratron monsters, which is always super helpful since I like having to be able to recycle them so I can dump them from hand again if I need to do so for um, there's something their condition where they can eat Dratron monster control. Or in the hand, summon itself from hand or graveyard, which is always super nice. Um, a second effect where, uh, where is it? During your main phase, um, so turn, so the turn to the graveyard. You can banish it. Um, target one monster you control. Uh, target one draw monster you control and gain two thousand two thousand attack points at the end of turn, end your opponent's turn, which is always super nice. It helps you boost up your draw monsters to either up to six thousand. Or your smaller ones up to 4,000. Or even help um, move better faster get back up to 3,000 after using the effect of the fill spell. Or, yeah, that's the, the, the ritual spell. Which is always super helpful since, um, you know, cycling your dreadful monsters is always really nice. And then also being able to, like, dump them to the graveyard if you need to. Or just using them just to, in order to get to uh, pump up a ritual monster you need. It's always super nice and helpful to have. I like running two of it. You could bump down to like one copy. It's up to you, personal preference. I like hiding the three because it just always comes in handy for recycling Jar Jar monsters. Finally, for the last Jar Jar spell we're playing, playing one of um As Astrum. I don't know how to pronounce it. What this card does is during your main phase, you target one Jar Jar monster or ritual spell, a ritual monster you control, and one face the monster your opponent controls, and your monster loses attack a thousand attack points. And until the end of your opponent's, the opponent's turn, and if it does, throw that opponent's monster. Basically, it, may, it basically just you lose you lose a thousand attack points temporarily to pop a opponent's monster, which is just super nice and helpful to have since I like this card a lot. Doesn't come out too much since basically your ritual monster, your um Draconis does the exact same thing. 
So it's like this card really isn't necessary. You can really cut this card if you want to. I like having the one for just the insurance. Plus, it's quick. It's a quick play, which means that if you need to, you can also use it for like um, you can use it for a popping any problematic card your opponent might summon, or whatever reason you know to get rid of a card. It's really annoying that you want to deal with. For tech pieces, I am running three copies of Cyber Emergency. Which allows you to, um, what it does is add either, basically you're only using it, it's I think a secondary effect, where you add a light machine top monster that can't be normal summon a set. Basically means all your dry top monsters that can't be normal summon a set. Um, since you're not playing any Cyber Dragon cards, except for like Cyber Dragon, Cyber Dragon Core, but you're playing it mostly so you can add your dry top monsters from your deck to your hand. The second effect does not matter to you, but the first one does, since you basically only want to use it as a ways to get to your extra searches for Dragons. This card basically is kind of like your um, fourth through six version, fourth, fifth, and sixth versions of Dragon Nova, but by adding them to your hand. So instead of switching to the field, which is super nice. And finally, for the last block card playing the deck, playing one copy of Terraform to get to your field spell. If you could play more Terraforms, we would, but one is fine and perfectly fine enough. Also, there are some cards I'm missing in the deck that I don't have extra copies of since they are in my Usar deck deck. But I took them off from the deck profile since we can show, I can show them off. We're running one Usar deck Big Dipper. Because it's you're not really running it because of the first one, you're running it because of something else in the extra you're running. And then we're running one Usar, um, Usar deck Drytron. It basically allows you to special summon one um, ultimate flagship Usartron. From your extra deck by banishing one Usar the Dipper and one um draw time Fafnir, basically both field spells from your hand um uh, from your hand and or field. All um uh, although you can um you can banish them from deck instead if you control either Usotic Polaria, which you don't play, or Dragon Alpha, which is basically like your main deck one of your main monsters. Uh on field, basically super cool. And if you attribute a monster as a Usarti monster or Dragon monster monster effect, you can banish the card from the graveyard instead. Super nice in the deck. Um, it basically allows you to your the big fusion, which is super nice. Big Dipper is kind of just there, so you can just have it as a way to just get to the um the fusion. There is also a monster coming out for Usarti and Drytrons. I don't know the name of it, but when that card comes out, I will be shoving three of it in here somewhere in the deck, on both this deck and in Drytron and Usartics. So that card would also be shoved in here somewhere at some point in time. Oh, uh, it'll probably replace some the Cyber Dragon cores, since I don't really need it. But uh, I'll figure something for the deck, though. But yeah, these two cards, they're not necessary for the deck. If you want to play them, you can't. I like having them around because I like having the free um, Banish for Tribute Summoning, for Tributing for their effects. In case you want to, you can really run through this card and run like, full of burial goods and jump to the graveyard to tribute off for free. It's whatever. I like hiding around because it's just really cool. Oh, I quit my camera again. Also, in case you're wondering where my sleeves are, I am running Dratron sleeves on my Dratron deck and Usaldic deck, in case you're wondering. I got them from eBay for like, I think like $10, for like for something like 100 just like a steal. And for the last card playing in the main deck, playing one um Dratron Meteor Shower. And it's a counter chat. Basically, it does is when. When your opponent no normal or special summon the monster, uh, why you control every monster gonna get the negate the summon, and if you do, shuffle that monster into the deck. The bit all it does is just a free negate and shuffle. Super nice. I like having it. You can cut that. You can cut it in one like solemn judgment or solemn strike. I like having this card because it's just really funny seeing my opponent's monster get shuffled back into the deck. But at the life point cost. But that's whatever. Um, really, you don't really need this card any either. You don't really need meteor shower. Because you only go you always go second with this deck, so it's like it's not really necessary since you almost never use it anyways. But it's like up to personal preference and if you want to run it or not. I believe the deck is like forty two cards, I think. I believe, but I could be wrong about that. Um, for the extra deck, we're running two copies of Jartron Move Battle Fafnir. What this card does is uh, it requires two plus um, level one monsters, and when it's um, summon, you can, um, I think, dump a Dratron card from your deck to the graveyard, which basically means any monster, spell, or trap, which is super nice. Also, if you would exceed, um, uh, if you would 
virtual summoning monster. You can use this material as as virtual material as well, which is super cool. So basically means that your big few um exceed monsters basically become freaks and you have to use monsters from like you don't have to reuse your own resources, you can just use monsters from Moon Beta Fafnir. And if your opponent um I think yeah, when you put activate this ball trap card, while you try a machine ritual monster, you can um quick effect, you can do that one scene from this card and negate the effect and destroy it. Which is always super nice. It basically free negate and destroy. If you control a machine ritual, which, is, which you always do, which is like super cool. Uh, plus, top of that, he can also go into Zeus, which is also super nice. If you tackle with him and his overlay top will go to Zeus, which is super cool. It's up to you what you want to do with it. Um, most of I keep him at the way he is because I like the way he looks. And I find sometimes Zeus is just isn't necessary with Drytron. Um, sometimes, but it's up to you again. Uh, excuse me. Next up. Playing two copies of Sylvan Princess, Princess Sprite. And what the card does is, once per turn, you do that once you use material from this card. Uh, as you top card your deck, if it's a spell or trap, add your hand. If it's a if otherwise, send to the graveyard. Basically means you basically are, is there plus either way for you? You either get your spell cards or you get your monster. Up to you. Either way is fine. Um, comes up a lot. Um, it's 18 on your attack points and it doesn't really fit into the Jotron theme. But it's a way to get either Dredge to the spell to the graveyard or for you to get your spell cards, which is super nice. I like how you two. You can cut it down to one if you want to, but it's up to you. Um next up, running one um Ghost Trick Dulahan. Um run this card because um its second effect is um once per turn, you can quick effect, you can take detect one two uh, material from this card. So I get one phase of monster uh, on the field and have it attacked to the end of the turn, which is super cool. Basically, it's just like a free attack attack habit, which means it helps you beat over bigger monsters in case you can't go to your either your you can't go to your bigger dread chance for whatever reason. But um, it's just like a cool card I like having. Plus, the way he looks, and I didn't have no else to run for the felt the fourth the fifteenth copy of the, um spot in the deck. So I put this in here because I think it was really funny and he looks really goofy. I like Dulahan. I like Ghost Trick in general, actually. Um, next up is the one um, Lurulusk Prominent um, Thrash. I think her name is. I don't know. What she does is um, she acquires two plus level one monsters and she gains two attack points, for, 500 attack points for each material attached to her, which basically means she can be a 2500 attack po attacker, which is pretty cool. And once per turn, you do attack points to from the scar, target one spell trap card, your opponent controls, summon to the deck. It's super nice. And then at the start of the damage step, if another monster you control battles, you can take the attack points of any number of materials from this card. That monster gains five, three attack points for each material detached, which is basically helps punch, 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 uh, pumps up one of your other monsters or herself, which is super cool. Um, I like writing her. She doesn't really come up too much, but it's just like a thing in case it does. But I do plan on replacing with something else, though, at some point in time. I don't know what, though. And lastly, um, I think... Playing two more Exceed Monster as well in here. Uh, we're also playing a number 78, um, Numbers Archive. Basically, what this card does is, um, once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detect Exceed Monster from, from this card. Your opponent randomly chooses any um, one card from your extra deck. If it's a number monster, um, if, it's a number mo if it's a number monster, it has a number between 1 and 99. And then you special card by using this card, Facebook card exceeds material, but banish it, um, banish that monster during your next end phase. Or during the end phase. Um, this card, I thought it was like a really, really goofy tech pick. Um, it was supposed to summon, um, Hope Harbinger. But I don't have a Hope Harbinger. I think. Yeah, I don't have a Hope Harbinger. So I couldn't, so this deck, this card, it's kind of like a dead card in the deck as of right now. Just because I don't have one, but um, I do plan on getting one at some point, like getting two cards at the point in time, but I do have two number replacements in the deck until I'm able to get two cards of Hope, Hope Harbinger, or at least a copy of Hope Harbinger, and a copy of Cypher of Galaxy Eyes, Cypher Dragon, I think. I think this one is still the point, still the point of monster, it pumps up to 3,000. And becomes Cypher Dragon as well. But I could be wrong with those. It's one of the Galaxy monsters that I need as well. Uh, but he was in here for that reason and for that reason only. 
Um, because I thought it'd be really funny if I could just get that to pop off once. I don't know. It's really bad, but I feel like it's really fun and goofy to pull off if I can. You can cut if you want to, though. Um, for the other number of monsters we're playing in the deck, playing one, uh, number five, Doom, um, Doom Chimera Dragon. What it does is it requires two plus level, uh, level five monsters. Basically, you're not selling it off of that. You're selling it off of, uh, numbers archive. Again, thousand attack points for each, um, material attached to it. Um, this card can, this card material can attack all monsters you control once each. And at the end of the battle phase, battle phase, if this card battled, you can have one of the effects. You can target one monster, opponent, uh, one monster, one monster in the your graveyard. Attach it, it, it add the material, or target one monster in your opponent's graveyard and place it on top of the deck. Um, basically, just either gets really big or makes your opponent have a dead draw. Either one is fine. And lastly, for these monsters, we're playing one copy of number sixty-eight, um, Sky Prison. Um, what it does is it gains 100 attack points, 100 attack and defense for each monster in your graveyard. Uh, once per turn, you can take one, one material from this card um, until the end of your opponent's turn. Um, this card cannot be destroyed by uh, effects. Also, you can put some monsters from their graveyards. Basically, this is a way to lock down your opponent's grave, lock down graveyards from your opponent for the turn, which is super cool. It's just really, really dumb card. I like playing. Does never come up though. For Link Monsters, running the one um Rusta Liger. Uh I didn't know this card did until one of my subscribers on the video call with told me about this card and basically told me that it's basically kinda of like an access code talker at home. Which is something I kinda of like. It's basically like having access code talker at home. And when you talk about that, I immediately took this card out of my binder and shoved it into Drytron because I was like, this is super cool. I don't have to shell out the money to play for the pay for an actual um access code target. If I can just run this temporarily until I'm able to get one. But what it does is it's a link four, requires two plus monsters except tokens. And you can target one link monster in your in either graveyard that will um this card gain attack points equal to that monster's attack. And to the end of this turn, you can tribute any number of monsters card points to destroy an equal number of monsters on the field or cards on the field. Basically means that if you can summon it or like after something like Appaloosa or like um, another like downward pointing monster, if you two two Dragon Monster two like dead cards the points do, you can pop two cards for free. And it's like it's super helpful. Um on top of that, it's also game type points, which basically helps you pump it up even more so. It's just basically kind of like a it's a weaker version of Access Go Talker, but without having to pay Access Go Talker. Pay for access code talk, which is super nice. I like having it. Would recommend running more than one though. Next up, Apple is a bolt of goddess for an Nibiru, stopping Nibiru, stopping as blossom, hand traps, and an interruption. This is a really good card. I like running um Appaloosa. Appaloosa is a really good card to go in, in general. Running one brute enforcer. Um what this card does is one um you can declare discard one card, take one monster, uh, take one face up card, your opponent controls. Your opponent discard the card with the same original type, monster spell trap, add that face up card to negate this effect. Otherwise, throw that card. It helps you get, get rid of problematic cards and makes your opponent have to drop either a hand to get rid of it, stop this effect from going off, or having your opponent either just kind of lose a card. It's super nice. And one copy of Nightmare Phoenix because it's helpful getting rid of spell trap cards that are problematic. And finally, the last card in the deck we're playing is. Uh, ultimate flagship um Usertron. Uh it it a what it does is this card can all be um this card is obviously at a Dratron and a Celtic card, which is super nice and always always nice to have. Um it can only be something put some with a Celtic Dratron, as you already know, I've written that over that already. And once per turn, if another effect monster is special to your um to your field, except in down step, you can add any Celtic mon Celtic or Dratron monster from deck to from your deck to your hand. Which is super nice for helping you search out for your um any cards you're missing for your deck, like ritual monsters or starters, in case you need it for next turn for setup. And it also allows you to once per turn, uh, take on one of your banish set the type monsters and um and add it to your hand, which is super nice. Helping you get back the recovery pieces that you banished for like effects of um the big Usatic um Jartron monster, which is super nice to have. But that is it for my Jartron deck profile.
I definitely enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of it, because I think this deck is super cool. I really enjoy playing it. I played this, like I said before, I played this deck on Master Duel since uh, I started Master Duel. Everything they were put into Master Duel, I've been playing them ever since. I love Drytron. I have played Drytron ever since they were announced in the TCG. I think before the next show, when they were announced, I was playing them in a single later on um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Mega. So, I've been playing Drytron for a while, and I've always felt like pure Drytron was the better version of Drytron, in my opinion. But people obviously think that the, um, that the Cyber Angel version was better, so it's whatever. I think my pure version is better. But let me know what you think. Tell me what you think I should run in the deck, because I'm always open to suggestions, or just create tech pieces. Especially for the extra decks, and I don't know if my extra is completely, um, perfect. So I would really like to know more about extra deck tech that you think I should run in the deck. Uh, also, you, you probably noticed that I didn't see have any hand traps in the deck because I don't run hand traps in Jarchon because I don't see the point. Mostly because I just don't have the patience to run hand traps since most of my deck are really casual decks. And I just don't like ha clogging them up with hand traps and figuring out the ratios for that and everything. But if you want to run hand traps, you can. I would recommend Ash Blossoms, Droll, Ghost Ogre. Probably in Beerus as well. Um, you don't really use Lexus too much. You can run like Pot of Prosperity, Pot of Desires if you want to. I would recommend probably Pot, pot, of, pot of Prosperity. Since the only card you really need your extra deck is really like the Move Benefit of Fafnir's. So you can banish every other card in your, in your graveyard in your extra if you want to. So um, I would recommend Pot of Prosperity if you can afford it. Um, Lightning Storm is probably a good thing too. You can run um, the Barrier Statue of Light. If you want, you can also run like like the Light Charmer, the Link Monster. That's a good card to run as well. Uh, if they ever come up with a Light Channeler card, well, Light the Light Channeler, I will be running that in Dredgeon as well since that card is super super cool. But I don't think it'll work in Dredgeon because I'm, so I think it will actually. Cause I think they require a monster with 50, uh, switch monster with fifteen hundred or less attack points, attack either attack or defense points. I don't remember. But I think it might work in Dredgeon, but I'm not one hundred percent sure about that though. But yeah, that's it. Um, remember to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, this is Jackson signing off.